Hello, I'm Bobby Grizek and welcome to this book review. This particular review is going to focus on the novel Hell Hole by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. Um, unlike Brian and Kevin's previous work, this particular novel is completely original. It takes place in its own universe and is set apart from the Dune universe that Brian and Kevin have successfully written in for the past several years. In the first part of this video, I'll be covering the actual book itself, the content, the characters, uh, the writing style. In part two, of this video I'll be covering the audio presentation of the book. So let's get started. Hellhole starts off with a prologue um, that tells the initial story of Tiber Adolphus. Um, you get a little bit of his character in this first prologue that really gives you a sense of who he is, um, what his morals are, and you instantly feel for him when he is banished to the planet Hall Home, uh, affectionately known as Hell Hall. Um, the planet itself, uh, in the years after his banishment, ten years um, to be exact, becomes a, a refuge for people that do want to start over again. Um, Sophie Vance is a character that you meet along with her son Devin uh, and they've been living there for quite some time when the book actually starts um, and after um, Adolphus is there. Um, and it is an amazing read. It goes, it flows so nicely. It just goes very rapidly. Um, and Hell um, being a refuge for people that want to start over, um, attracts a lot of settlers that have no place else to go. Among those settlers that we meet in the first part of the book are Fernando, Vincent, and Antonia. Fernando is the con man um, that um, is sort of a used car salesman type character. Um, his backstory, however, is very interesting. Um, as is the backstory with most of, or if not all, of the characters that you meet. Um, in addition to Fernando Vincent, who becomes a um, sort of uh, reluctant friend of sorts to Fernando, um, has an equally interesting backstory. And Vincent is a more um, docile personality, um, not 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 as assertive or as um, uh, imaginative as Fernando is, um, but that makes the contrast of both characters really interesting to watch um, as you're reading. It's it's just a phenomenal um, portrayal of these characters. Antonia is the beautiful girl, um, beautiful young girl that needs to start over because of her tra traumatic past. Um, and unfortunately for her, her trauma follows her to hellhole eventually. Um, and through a course of events that occurs, she doesn't quite remain the same. Um, in the meantime, you have the planets of the crown jewels, the main hub of humanity, um, with their leader, Diadem Michelle, um, who is the most evil character I've ever read, ever. 
she is one that you just kind of hate from day one and you want to continue to loathe her and she despite all of that is so intriguing because of that you just can't stop reading um her people are very much pompous and um her she has a daughter who's a princess but is really entitled to nothing um there is no inheritance to a throne after her death um it passes on to another family because of not wanting to let one family have too much hold over the government um so the daughter of Diadem Michelle um, is a really lost soul and you really feel for her and she falls for a nobleman um, who mysteriously winds up dead and you really feel for her. Um, the nobleman's son, Christoph, um, from a neighboring world, flees at that point to Hellhole. And by this point, um, Fernando has stumbled across in his travels with Vincent to map the uncharted areas of the planet. They stumble across a, um, uh, like a watery, um, liquid, um, and Fernando, in leaning over it, uh, gets a little too close and makes contact with it. Um, he passes out, you think he's gonna die, and when he comes back to consciousness, he has this glossy look over his eyes. And you realize that he has been merged with an ancient alien um, inhabitant of um, the planet that was dormant in this well, in this um, spring, this water. Um, and he explains that his name is Zarek and he shares the body of Fernando with Fernando and that either mind can speak whenever they really want to for the most part, which is interesting. And um, uh, Fernando explains that there's more of this slick water it's called and that more of his people are stored in it and um, he basically in talking with uh, Tiber Adolphus uh, convinces him to let more people awaken to this um, this miracle of sharing these alien minds um, and they do quite literally by the end of the book you have hundreds of people sharing these alien minds with these aliens um in addition to that you have fernando describing the location of this um vault a sort of uh um hidden um refuge for alien artifacts um, and in that place are three surviving aliens as well um, and they're described as sort of a um, uh, like a caterpillar type creature with a um, more formed torso and and a uh, you know, an obviously shaped head and arms, um, and they have the power of, uh, telekinesis, basically. Um, some do, not all, but some. These are the only survivors of the actual original inhabitants. The other ones come through in the Shadow Zions, as they're called, um, which are the ones that merge with the slick water. You find out that the Zion race was was there on Hellhole long before anyone else was, and it was due to an asteroid collision that wiped them out. Um, and Zarek, Fernando Zarek, was the one 
Derek was the one that had created the slick water to store personalities in. And it just, it's an amazing concept. It's, it moves, like I said, flows very nicely. Um, the diet that Michelle keeps sending investigators to Hellhole to find out what the big deal is about the place. Um, in particular, Iship, uh, <laughs> a character that is longing for nobility, but he's not quite noble. Um, at least that's the impression you get initially until his faithful and trusted secretary who wants him more than anything you could tell um, uncovers in his genealogy that he is descended from nobility from the long forgotten um, a sh uh, shamed family that was basically driven apart and from scandal and um, he is, starts to plot a, an ascendance to power, um, starting out by killing off one by one uh, the surviving members, surviving um, members of the families that um, had wronged his ancient ancestors. Um, so you have that plot line going on as well. Um, the transportation uh, network that enables people to travel from planet to planet rather quickly um, is a sort of slipstream technology, so to speak, and it falls along a path of these crystals that are laid out um, in the path from planet to planet um, and replenished throughout the years to make sure that no one winds up getting lost in space. Um, the close-knit planets to the Diet of Michelle in the actual constellation itself, as it's called, which is really like her little empire, um, they all are very well connected, but the outlying worlds like Hall Home, um, otherwise known as Hellhole, and some of the other worlds are not as, as readily accessible, and um, Adolphus is basically setting up an under, underground uh, travel network that he plans to put online to connect all the outlying worlds and limit their, their having to rely on the crown jewels making them all separate entities to support each other. Which is also a really interesting political concept. Um, as I said, there are so many aspects to this book, as you can hear, it's just amazing. Antonia, who had traveled with Fernando and Vincent to Hellhole, um, um, is tracked by her past to the planet and in the course of events that leaves her violated she decides to take on an alien personality via the slick water um, as does um, Devon uh, um, and they become lovers uh, both in the conscious um, mind as well as the alien minds that they take on as the two aliens that they take on were lovers. So that's interesting as well. Um, the book leaves you on a cliffhanger for more to come as it is the first book in the series. So we have great things to look forward to in book two. Uh, as well as further books in the series. Um, I would give Hellhole a well-deserved 10 out of 10 as an excellent novel with well-developed plot and subplots, um, amazing characters, and just um, 
a really phenomenal writing style that Kevin J. Anderson and Brian Herbert have developed uh, together whereby they really gel perfectly together.